Alrighty, back with another networking slash nerd related video for you guys. Um, just want to go over in detail kind of the network I was tasked with uh, configuring and deploying for a client that uh, they came to us wanting to get outfitted for Wi-Fi. Um, their their building infrastructure consists of uh, a bunch of brick and concrete, so not ideal for Wi-Fi. And uh, essentially how they have their Wi-Fi networks right now, and I say emphasis on networks, um, plural, because they have three to four conference rooms that they kind of use frequently, and they have three to four different routers in each room. Uh, just, again, the, the, the concrete and uh, brick construction makes it difficult for Wi-Fi to, to pass through. So they've got three to four of those so each one's on a different network they need you know each one's a different SSID each one has a different username or password um, but yeah long story short this is what I've managed to cook up for them so what we got here uh, the, we're doing nine APs we'll go over the APs first so we've got uh, this is just my little testing guy right here uh, it's an AC light and then if we swing over here this is actually my home labs in my, my bedroom so I apologize <laughs> we've got six of these Unify AC lights and what these guys are going to do primarily um, like I said three to four major conference rooms they use there's going to be one in each conference room um, so that way those rooms are covered you know without any issues uh, then there's going to be two remaining AC lights. One's going to be in the lobby. Uh, there are a few users who use that frequently up there. And then uh, there's going to be... Uh, there's another... On the other side, there's a, a conference room. Uh, there's actually two conference rooms. They're just kind of like arts and crafts stations almost. Um, but they're... It's right at a 90 degree turn. So on one side, there's a room. And then on the other side, there's a room. So we're just going to put one right outside that door. And then that'll cover that perfectly. Um, then what we have here, these are AC lights, or sorry, AC LRs. Um, I do have everything labeled as well, physically where it will be going and the IP scheme. Uh, so that way when I'm on site and deploying these, that'll go over smoothly. Um, the AC LRs are going to be for, there's two main hallways and uh, the office hallway here. Uh, essentially, there's like four to four to... Uh, six main, main doors, I think, and each door kind of branches off and goes, you know, it, it can go pretty deep uh, to other rooms in said doors. Um, so, just an example, you know, you walk in one door and then it might branch, it might be, you know, 30 feet deep and branch off to a couple different uh, offices. Um, and again, primarily concrete and brick construction, so it's going to be hard to penetrate through all those. Um, and what I did was I took an LR on site because uh, the 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 offices essentially were going to be the biggest you know issues. Uh, you can just stick the lights in the conference rooms and that'll cover them perfectly. Um, but again, the LRs I took an LR on site, stuck it kind of centrally to where all the offices would be. Um, stuck it in the hallway central to where all the offices would be. And then what I did was I went to the farthest uh, the four furthest corners. Um, from where this access point were, and uh, I, I made sure the connection was good, and all all the connections were under um, 65 dBm, so perfect for you know any any high bandwidth requiring application. Um, so good to go there. And then we've got one AC Pro, and this is going to be there for the gym, and the uh, the gym access point. Uh, they're going to do like assemblies and stuff in there, so there there's the potential to be you know upwards of 100 to 150 clients. So we just figured we'd go with the pro, um, and then that way it'll be able to handle the larger work workloads. Not that you know the other access points can't, but that's what the pros are designed for. So definitely wanted to splurge there and not be SOL and you know have to get a have to upgrade from if we put a light in there or an LR and then have to upgrade to that anyways so we just decided to do it that way um, now back to the, the networking setup so we'll get to the switch here in a minute but the firewall um, how I have this set up if you'll excuse the mess of wires I have 
Uh, I have two network drives running to my room. One runs directly into my computer, and that's on my main home network. And then the other drop is uh, the way I have it set up. I have an Edge Router X down in the basement, and then the Edge Router X feeds into the home network through one port, and then the other port I have set up uh, that's doing so. My main home network's 192.168.0.1. And then I've got the 192.168.0.2 network, or IP address, reserved. Um, and then that comes into this firewall. And then right there, that's ETH0. So this, my outside interface on this firewall is 192.168.0.2. Okay? So, you know, normally your, your outside interface would be coming from your modem directly into the firewall. But in my case, as a test lab, I've got it set to route to the firewall, or sorry, from the firewall goes into my Edge Router X, Edge Router X into my modem. Um, and then, since this firewall, and this is the exact same firewall that they have on site, and uh, they have the base security license for this firewall, so essentially you can only do three VLANs and you've got no trunking capabilities. So what I've come up with, and they didn't want to upgrade to another modem or the license because they're going to be spending a, a decent chunk of money on the, the Wi-Fi and everything anyways, so they wanted to hold off on that, which is fine. We can come in later and, and upgrade it if they want to, um, but that's a story for another day. So anyways, what I've done here, since there's no trunking ports or uh, and, and only limit to three, well, the three VLANs isn't an issue, but the lack of trunking capability was the issue. So what I've done... ETH1, the red cable, and ETH2, the blue cable, feed into these switches, or into the switch, and eventually they will be SFP ports. Uh, what had happened was I ordered these 10G Tech SFP modules, and uh, they weren't compatible with the switch, even though I saw at least 10 plus reviews saying 8-port uh, Unify, 16-port Unify, 48-port Unify, switches were compatible with these and they had plugged them in working no problem well that wasn't the case for me so I just ordered the ubiquity ones through another reseller um, and I'll just be returning these but anyways these feeds will be done over the SFP ports as soon as those modules come in um, and essentially this red cable feeds the 192.168.1.1 network which is the on-site locator on-site IP uh, subnet for the client that will drive their uh, that drives their physical network. Um, every computer that's plugged in uh, via Ethernet, and then that'll drive their staff Wi-Fi portion of the or staff network portion of the Wi-Fi. And then this blue cable here is uh, running in ETH2 on the firewall. That's designed for the guest wireless, and so that's doing 192.168.10.1. And that's got a VLAN ID of 3. Um, I guess I should mention this is the native VLAN. It's VLAN 1. Um, and then the blue cable is VLAN 3. And the outside interface is VLAN 2, technically. Um, but so, runs into there. It's a 192.168.10.1 network. And then that is going to be there for their guest Wi Fi portion, or the guest wireless portion for the Wi Fi network. Um, and then I've got a cloud key here which uh, definitely makes things super easy and and uh, I can do cloud access management um, so that way I don't have to install a controller locally which is perfect um, and then they've got another they've got two main locations this is network that I'm setting up for them today is for the north location and the south location is already set up with ubiquity gear and a bunch of unify APs so I'm going to migrate the site onto this controller once I deploy it on site on the north location. And then I'm going to migrate the south site onto this controller so that way both sites are on this controller. And uh, we don't have to worry about anything there. So, um, Real quick, the reason we went with the 48 port switch is they have, even though we're only doing 9 access points, is that they have two dumb switches currently, a 24 port and a 16 port. And... Uh, they're not even maxing those out. I believe each port or each switch has uh, two free ports on it. So you know, do the math: 22 and 14. That's 36 plus 9, 45. And 
plus the cloud key, that's only 46 total ports. So essentially, once we get these two uplink feeds off the RJ45 por ports and into the SFP ports, then we'll have two open RJ45 ports to connect stuff. And uh, actually, I'm not taking into effect the uplink port on the dumb switch, so they'll have three ports, technically. Um, and, you know, it, it typically you want to leave, you know, like, 20% ports open, but they're really not going to expand a whole lot, and they've got three ports to connect things to, um, and if it comes down to it, we can always just get them another 16 port or 24 port switch, but they really have physically plugging equipment in and running more drops to connect additional gear, um, very unlikely, so like I said, the three ports uh, to expand on should be plenty, so. Alright, we can jump on to the uh, Unify controller portion of this video real quick and I'll kind of just give you guys a rundown of uh, how the network set up. Okay, uh, I know I would started to film uh, the screen with my camera, so I'll just give a kind of in-depth overview on the computer, uh, not just recording the screen. Uh, so essentially, uh, I guess we can pop back in here in the devices and we'll go to our switch here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as you can see here, it's a little small. Okay, I'll try and zoom. Um, here are two the two main links, uplinks. So this is the primary uplink that feeds the 192.168.1.1 network, and this is another uplink that does the 192.168.10.1 for the guest network. Um, this way, the staff will still be able to connect to server and everything, access, doc, access documents, server, and uh, I've got it set to not forward the, not forward to VLAN 1 uh, on the 10.1 network, so that way uh, the guest network will not be able to access the server, and that way somebody can't just come in and, you know, get on the server or past employee, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's that. Um, I guess I can go into the ports themselves. Uh, port, port 48 is set to the LAN switch port profile. And then, <coughs> excuse me, port 47 set to the guest firewall 3 is what I named it to. Um, and 3 is the, the VLAN ID. Uh, we'll pop back over here in a second. Um, you guys the networks themselves so here's the LAN and then that's the guest both on corporate and here's the 1.1 slash 24 it's a they're both class C subnuts guest is a 10.1 with an N3 <coughs> excuse me uh, and then wireless networks just name of the company and then name of the company and gust. Uh, now we go into the profiles here for a moment. Switch ports. This is how I have the access points configured. Uh, the access points actually, uh, yeah, port 41 is plugged in currently. Uh, it's, there's an AC light on that port and uh, the way it is set up, take a look. Which port profile is set to both? Now, both taking the the native network, uh, which is the LAN, and guest three. Which guest is the name of the network, and then three is the VLAN ID. Um, it's taking these two ports right here. So we've got the LAN port, uh, the LAN switch port, and then the guest firewall switch port which the guest firewall port is just, again, set to that, that guest network, and then the three is the VLAN ID. Then go back into the both for a moment. Native network LAN and guest three, they're both tagged, so they're both being forwarded to that port. So then the access point is going to be able to broadcast both 192.168.1.1 for the guest, and then... 192.168.1.1 it's assigned to the guest 
10.1. That is set to the... So, pretty straightforward setup. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, I can show it in action. Go to our devices here real quick. Leave. Yep, I've got my Kindle Fire and then my phone both connected. Uh, I guessed ten dot fourteen on ECS as well. Ten dot sixteen. I'll go ahead and switch my phone over real quick. So just opening my phone Wi-Fi, getting crush it. Sometimes it can take a second or two. I have everything all named and ready to go there. So when I deploy these on site, it's all good to go there. There it goes, pops up. And 192.1.28. So again, simple setup, but this is kind of my first time uh, attempting to do any work with VLANs uh, and, and layer 3 routing and switching so definitely definitely happy with this project and uh, it, it'll definitely be a smooth install especially with the cloud key so alrighty thanks for watching